We're going to take a look at two examples dealing with isosceles triangles in this video. Uh, the first one here, I have a picture and then I have a bunch of given information. I'm going to take that given information I'm going to mark it. It tells me that segment DE and segment CD are congruent, so mark those. They may or may not look congruent, but we're going to go by what it tells us and not by what it looks like. We know that segment BC and segment AC are congruent. And we also know the measure of angle CDE is 120 degrees. That would be this angle up here. And then, ultimately, we want to find the measure of angle BAC, which would be this angle right here. All right. Now, what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to go back to my first theorem of the day that said if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides will have to be congruent, which is going to get me to here and here. Because I notice in triangle CDE, the two sides that are congruent, I'm going to go angles opposite, those have to be congruent. I should be able to figure out the measure of those two angles because I already know the measure of one of the angles. I'm going to take 180, I'm going to subtract out the 120, which tells me I have 60 degrees left for angle E and angle DCE. Now if I take that 60, cut it in half, I'm going to end up with 30 degrees. So this angle here is going to be 30 degrees, and so is this one. Well, I look over here, and angle BCA is vertical to angle DCE. Therefore, this one's going to have to be a 30 degree angle. And now I can use that same pro or same theorem that I did earlier that said if two sides of the triangle are congruent and the angles opposite those sides have to be congruent, that tells me that this angle, angle A and angle B have to be congruent. Now I can do the same thing. I can take my 180, I can get rid of the 30 degrees from angle B, C, A. Now I'm left with 150 degrees for angle A and for angle B. I take that and cut it in half, I just found out that my angle BAC is 75 degrees, and that's the one that I was looking for. The measure of angle B is also going to be 75 degrees, but the problem specifically asked me for the measure of angle BAC. Now my next one wants to find the length of all three sides of the triangle. And it gives me side lengths in terms of x for all three sides. It also tells me that, oops, undo that. It tells me that two of these angles are congruent. Notice this one down here at the bottom and the one up at the top are congruent angles. Well, I go to that second theorem that we talked about today. If two angles are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. So I can mark that. And if the sides are congruent, well, then their lengths are going to be equal. Which tells me that the 3x plus 15, that side, and the 7x minus 29 side, those sides will be equal in length. I can solve my equation. I'm going to get rid of the 3x from both sides. I'm going to get rid of the minus 29 from both sides. Now I'm left with 4x equal to 44. And I find out that the value of x Oops, I almost put 44 again. The value of x is 11. And then if I want to find the length of the, the three sides, I just have to plug it in. I'm going to start here with this first one. It's going to tell me that 3 times my x value of 11, and I have to add on the 15. Well then, if I do that, 3 times 33, or 3 times 11 is 33, add on the 15, and I'm going to end up with 48 for a side length of kind of that top left side, which means this one's also going to have to be 48. And you can plug the 11 in there. 7 times 11 is going to put you at 77, and 77 minus 29, right back to 48. The only other one that I have to do is, is the base of my isosceles triangle. So if I take my 5, put my 11 in here for x, and then add on the 4, we find out that that side is going to be 55 plus 4, which puts me at 59. The labels on this would be units, and being I didn't give you a label, I'm fine if you want to leave it off. Otherwise, if 
48 units, 48 units, and 59 units. So there's a couple examples using the isosceles triangle theorem and the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem.